So for today's daily games, I thought we would take a trip down memory lane and play some orcs. Um, I haven't actually played them since Heroes of Skyrim launched, and while orcs didn't get a lot of new tools, they got a couple of new cards, um, one of which is uh, the 3-2 that will draw a card if you have additional strength creatures on the board that I'm kind of a fan of, so I thought, uh, hey, let's take the, the deck for a spin. Um, the version that I'm running, as you can see on the screen, is actually very heavily red. We have a 100% chance to trigger Mighty Ally. And as such, I also thought I would take a uh, like cheeky pass with the build, and we're playing um, one Unstoppable Rage to maybe pair with those Mighty Allies. And uh, we're going to just dive right in, again, just like we always do. Unedited and raw for these and see how it goes. Um, what do you know? It is OG Flex. He is uh, another streamer, another content creator. Honor and praise to you. And means it should make for an interesting match. May you walk on warm sands. So we are going first, and he is on mid-range sorcerer. As if there's any other kind. Good old value sorcerer. Uh, with no three drops, uh, we're kind of in a world of hurt right now. Which I find to be really interesting because we run more three drops than anything else. I think this deck runs something like 15 three drops. But our biggest issue is that uh, without another orc, there's no way that this survives. Ah, uh, there we go. I was going to say, there's no way that that survives, and that means that we get no uh, butcher. But as it is, he's already chased us out of the field lane. So that's a little sad. So we do have the earth bones, which can be helpful, but uh, this next turn we are almost certainly going to butcher it up. There's the three drops. They're certain to show up. Um, I think we still take butcher in this case. I think we almost go back and contest here because he can only play one tome, so he still can't fully trade in. Um, taking back the field lane is kind of important, so I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Shale take you. Shale take you. Alright, so he's just gonna opt with the herpy to go that route. Alright, so we could tome the ally there. So we have a couple of different options. Uh, we have Wood Orc Headhunter to like run this over, which is a better saturation. Or we could play yet another beat stick, but then that would give him nice easy trades. I think that the correct play is to probably just get rid of that dagger fall right off the board at this point. If this wasn't shackled, we probably would have played Earthbone and just ran that over before they got value, but... Now I think that this is the play. It's interesting to see how this match is going to play out because Sorcerer is uh, one of, if not the best deck in the format right now. It just generates so much value. Um, once it gets ahead, it's really hard to wrest control back away from it. It's a pretty resilient archetype. So this is gonna be gonna be hard to say the least. It's gonna be a close game. Continues continues with the value. I was gonna say hopefully he got presented something like this because this wouldn't have been that great for him anyway. So this is going to. I mean, let's be honest. That's just going to die. Um, even if we earthbone it, it still drops back down to a 5-5. Five five. We just don't have very good saturation options here either. Um, let's just drive some damage home and play another giant orc, I guess. If we can keep him on the defensive, I think it works in our favor. 
just because of the size of our guys. No, Alright. So he rests control Shit. back from us. I keep a spare blade in my boot. All right, so that gives us six in reach. So that's probably not our best option. It's likely uh, an earth bone and a mighty ally. It's just a question of what do we want to earth bone. Um, killing this outright makes a lot of sense, but shooting this also pulls three damage off the board. But I still feel like just taking the threat off makes the most sense at the moment. The forest will not suffer your presence. So we know that the Mighty Ally is going to trigger. Um, it would be kind of nice if we could run ourselves into uh, like some Sower of Revenge action. Um, it would have also been kind of nice if we could have found, say, Unstoppable Rage. We might have held this and not killed the Harpy had we had Rage, because it would have set up some nice burst potential. But he is, he is definitely in the driver's seat right now, make no mistake about it. The damage on the board represents 10, so really it's like 16 to 16. However, he's got superior like card advantage, because we know he's sitting on two tomes from his Daggerfall Mages. And he's likely got uh, just better finishers, if we're being honest. Um, with the ring, you could play on Kano this turn. Uh, with the ring, next turn, Supreme Atromancer comes online. Both of which would be very, very solid plays, uh, given the current state of the game. No kidding, this one. There's the sower that we were looking for. Do your work. Careful there, friend. Probably gonna ward here so that I can't run it over. No, he wards that. That's very interesting. Okay. That is very interesting. Um. So again, we have potentially six from hand with that combo. So as long as we take some path where this swings and this gets played and not silenced, uh, we have a potential path to victory. The silent guards so let's go ahead and meet off of that. So now our real decision is do we take this out or take this out? I feel like it's this because this is the uh, more defensive option, right? We can uh, gatekeeper to potentially soak some more and just get this off to potentially protect the ally. This, this requires him to be a little bit more responsive um, and less proactive, hopefully, like Yeah, so that's the downside. Your blood will spill. Do your worst. You can take us to eight. Yeah! Does have the harpy. I'd be curious to see if he actually gives me the cards here or not. Because a prophecy would spell victory potentially if we hit the uh, Ravager, for example. And he opts to not. Oh, it would have been. It would have been victory! Oh, oh gee. You saved yourself and you don't even know it. Alright, so.
the unfortunate truth is we now have to take ourselves out of um, like lethal range. We will no longer have six burst damage from hand because I think we're going to have to use this to take care of this thief. I don't really see any way around it. Um, we've got to clear this. It represents way too much damage. So I do in fact think that is our only path. The forest will not suffer only path to victory. Um, I really wish we had a ping effect. I really wish this was stone shard orc and not my battle rage. I'm ready for anything. But sadly, beggars cannot be choosers. Not really worried about charge. So I think putting this here is fine. This should be good. So he does have the shade to trade. Even if he has double lightning bolt, he would be one off of lethal. He would have to have... Uh, he would have to have double lightning bolt and like a dagger, but he's played his only dagger. And Kano does not represent enough. Atro by itself does not represent enough. Alright, let's hope he doesn't have a way to reward. Alright, he does have a big ass wall though. And he does have a way to reward. Ironically, he goes with that option though. And not the shade. Oh, uh, well, there's the stone shard that we were looking for earlier. Um, let's go ahead and see what this draws us. So we can clear that. I mean, we have to sacrifice both creatures and the stone shard pinging it, but we can, in fact, clear that and then develop another Ravager. Man, I just keep thinking back to that turn where if he would have, uh, if he would have swung, we would have had it. Would have had the game. It was a heads up play by Flex. I mean, I don't think that I can leave that on the board. You get one shot. Make it good. The day is mine. This should be good. He just still has a fistful of cards. I'm quite envious of his cards, actually. He's been doing a good job of trying to stall me out by not giving me that third rune. Again, very, very heads-up play. If we can find something that provides us with some burst, we'll be in a good spot. Good orc headhunter is solid. Alright, so right now we are one off of lethal. Moloch, guard my heart! We are one off of lethal. Still um, I do think that we have to go for it. The forest will not suffer your presence. Ah! I'm really tempted to use this now, but getting him to one doesn't really help. We don't have any prophecies that do one damage, right? And we don't have um, like any other any other reason to play this. Like if we draw a gatekeeper, it represents lethal right away. So I think that we hold on to it for now. Again, getting him to one doesn't matter, and everything in our deck is seven or less, so there's nothing that we can draw that we wouldn't be able to play in conjunction with it. So I think holding on to it there is fine. Your bullet will spill. I 
All right. The giant is a pretty big deal. It does they will meet does remove man. the guard. And that should be game. It has been an engaging hunt. This was a worthy There's contest. Nowhere they can hide. Let's There's just go ahead and uh, do this hide. instead of the giant. The hunter becomes let's, the give, let's give it to the lady. Let's give it to the lady. Well, that was a hard-fought victory. I am not gonna lie. Oh, look. Dailies. Not gonna lie. Again, Flex is great player. Um, friend of the stream. Let's go ahead and dive into game number two. Hard fought victory. All right, we are going first. And it's against Scout. Uh, it will be Ramp Scout, let's be honest. I think keeping these are fine. Rapid Shot's actually a little bit... You know what, we're actually gonna ship the Rapid Shot away. It's really just a cycle and I think we want bodies more than anything. Um, so I do like these guys. I think that these are almost like the East March Crusader of orcs. However, with our hand right here, there we go, that got a little bit better. Um, I think we avoid that. I normally want to take the field lane there, however, it's really important we get two things down so we can start cycling these. And if we put that there, if he runs Murkwater Witch, that would have meant, yeah, exactly. Would have meant an immediate trade. Whereas now, look, planning pays off. I will gladly not draw to keep that guy alive. So now hopefully he does not have a second one. Um, we would very much like to start drawing cards. Yeah. Guardian is annoying, but not the end of the world, because again, we wanted to cycle on this turn, so... Right behind you. Garnag. Garnag is huge in this matchup for us. Um, Taste of my power. Yep, I guess we'll just go ahead and clear it out. So as long as he doesn't have a way to trade into this, we do set up yet another cycle. Keeping the guys going in hand is kind of a big deal for us, so... Um, though I think this should be good. we're gonna play this either way so the question now is do I take the cycle while I have the opportunity or do I stone shard to clear because then I have two on I think that I take the cycle Stone charting doesn't let me clear damage through, and if he plays another guard here, I may want to be able to force it through. So I think we take the cycle in this scenario. The mighty ally is certainly helpful. That's not a good sign. So he is a scout the that runs provides. the Drain Vitality. Good to know. Well, that is two histamages. Um, Stone Shard would deal two. This would clear. Mighty Ally would come down. That seems to be the right path to me. To get one shot, make it good. Again, Mighty Ally, 100% chance to trigger with this build. So, we have to start thinking about developing Garnag now, just because he is well over the threshold. Probably should have tried to do it last turn, but we really needed to clear the guards. Red Bramon is kind of a big deal in this matchup, so it does hurt us that he had it. 
My scales. He's been very resilient. We have not even cracked a rune as of yet. We must protect the Night Mother. All right, so we're gonna get the the Garnag play down. Hope he doesn't have yet another answer, because a Garnag can be oppressive against against Ramp. I lurk in the shadows. Well, that is incredibly unfortunate. So normally I would say that Garnag by itself would be enough to carry us to victory. He's playing a bit of a non-traditionalist. Most ramp scouts have cut Ungulum because oftentimes he's just a 1-1 and they don't run enough uh, cards to cycle through to find him. However, uh, we found the one non-traditional guy who not only runs him, but immediately draws uh, Brotherhood Assassin on us. Look to the skies. Which is unfortunate because that does mean that we will essentially have to vigilante to clear it. The silent guards with you. No Let's see what happens through. first, I guess. There's nowhere they can hide. The hunter becomes no! very, very unfortunate for us, but it is also pretty imperative that we try to keep Garnag alive if possible. He's gonna be able to knock some damage onto it here, so if he does have a leaf lurker, it might actually just already be game. Like I'm not sure that we'd be able to push enough damage through if he can kill Garnag. Again, the fact that we had to use our, our vigilante that turn to clear the the three three lethal, um, really brutal. Do not think to sneak by me. The forest yep, is there it is. Cloak. Yeah. Oh wow! Plus the tree minder. I mean, he's not gonna swing. Like, there's no way he swings in that scenario. Band together. I'm ready for anything. All right, so now that he has all of his magic back, um, this is probably where he Odevangs and then passes the turn, um, setting up enough for lethal damage the following turn. Man, that one Ungulum really turned the tide of our battle. Just because of this. Kind of amazing, Your really. Is no match for hey! Mine. I assure you, though you're watching this recorded, this isn't pre recorded. Um, sometimes I don't like Let being right. Sometimes it's just a burden, and yet, there we are. I'm right. Only 15 cards deep, but he, of course, had the Odeving because Scout always has Odeving. Every time you think Scout has Odeving, they have Odeving. So, a uh, bit of a rough, bit of a rough go. He not only found his Ungulum, but he drew an Assassin. He also had Red Bramin on curve and Odeving on curve. I'm not sure. Um, he had double, double Hiss Mage. I'm not sure that you can win that as a, as a mid-range deck. Just realistically, I don't think that that's a thing. No, for um, I don't think there's anything that saves us. Technically, Morkel Gatekeeper over here could block that, but yeah, there it is. We could have cleared that last turn instead of uh, rolling over the Tree Minder, but playing for him to not have the unique legend is still statistically correct, even though I'm always wrong. <laughs> 